Greetings, everyone. I feel I have a very important message for the body of Christ. When I received this, I feel it was personal, but it was also a corporate word. And I think you will agree, you know, the Lord speaks to us in many different ways. And uh, as I kind of uncovered this dream, this experience, uh, you'll kind of understand what I'm talking about. I feel that I had a vision within a dream. Now, in this, first, the Lord asked me, what do you see? And, you know, I felt like he said to Jeremiah, what do you see? You see, he was looking over his word to perform it. But he asked Jeremiah, what do you see? So in this experience, he said to me, what do you see? Well, as he said that, I looked, and what I saw was a beautiful male lion walking through a household, examining everything in his sight. Okay, now it was beautiful. So, you know, my mind wants to go to the lion of the tribe of Judah. However, this is what I heard. The enemy is looking over all that you have to see what he can take next. Then came a knowing, we must watch and pray to keep him at bay. You see, the enemy does that. He comes to gain access. That was the understanding I got. He, he comes to gain access through the loss of a family member, through sadness, etc. Then he looked over all the possessions and roared like a lion to create fear. So the message was, we must watch and pray. Now, uh, 1, Peter 1, 1 Peter 5, verse 8, says that the enemy, the devil, roams around like a roaring lion with fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and who he can devour. That's what the enemy was doing. This lion was not the lion of Judah. This was the enemy, and, you know, he was quite beautiful, and Satan is, isn't he? But we must remember this. We must be well-balanced, temperate, sober of mind, vigilant, and cautious at all times. This is First Peter 5, 8, the first part of it. We need to cast all of our anxieties and our worries upon him, Okay, then, uh, you know, we are putting everything, we're trusting in the Lord and not giving the enemy access to our life. You know, I saw he was taking everything, little bit at a time, not everything all at once. It wasn't like Job where he basically lost everything within a matter of, you know, a very short period of time. You know, it sounds like it was matter of minutes or hours that he lost everything but that wasn't it so you know what where do we give him access what was he taking you know this could be what i heard here was that it was through death but what is that is it a natural death is it a death of a, a marriage a relationship a job a promotion could it be through the natural loss of a child perhaps a pregnancy could be a death to our finances. It's something where there's been a real uh, discouragement, a defeat that's come, that's brought with it, you know, anxiety, depression, fear, grief, disappointment, you know, any ungodly thoughts. That gives the enemy access. And we begin agreeing, you know, when we start down that bunny trail, you know, he gets right in there and, and prompts us. I'm always talking about that. He prompts our thoughts. So we don't want to agree with him. He comes in if we if we have access. And I'll say an access point to me was when, in Bob's death. Okay, that was an access point for me. Did I agree with the enemy then? He's always trying to bring us to the place that we think that we're worthless. We can't do anything. God hasn't forgiven us. Uh, you know, you're never going to amount to anything. You know, are we going to agree with him? Or am I going to rise up and say, no, I am more than a conqueror. You know, Christ defeated everything at the cross, you know, and I am going to 
uh, rise up and stand on the solid rock of Jesus Christ and know that he has, the enemy is a defeated foe. He is crushed under my feet, okay? So, you know, we need to take an aggressive stand against the spoken word. We oftentimes, you know, when we come into agreement with the enemy, you know, it's it starts here in our thoughts and then we allow the words to come out. And that's where the enemy, he gets access then and he uses our words against us. You know, if you say, okay, maybe you've, you've lost your job. You know, a lot of people lost a lot of things during COVID and, and these things were real. However, you know, when we come into the agreement with the enemy, I mean, he has a real heyday when we, we have it here and then we internalize it and then we start spewing it out of our mouth. Okay. That gives the enemy power. Okay. Cause he has no power, but what we give him through the words that we speak. So now the other thing here, um, the Lord said, you know, he is watching over our words to perform it. That's the thing. He's watching over. We must watch and pray. The Lord told his disciples that night in Gethsemane. He said, watch and pray. Okay, that's something we need to be doing. Watching over the word. You know, like Jeremiah, what do you see? What is the word the Lord has given you? What has he given you? Are you watching over that word so he performs that word through you? Okay, you know, we can let doubt and fear come into us. Then we're on the side of the enemy. Or we can rise up and say, no, you know, get behind me, Satan, right? What the enemy has stole, scripture says he has to give it back to us seven times, all right? So what is the word the Lord has given you? Watch over that word. And if you have given the enemy access in your life, okay, you go back and, and, you know, think about what the Lord has promised you. Make sure that you heard from the Lord. What has he said to you? What promises has he given you? Has he validated that word? You know, he's watching over that word to perform it. And um, if you have given the enemy access, you know, if you've spoken out about yourself, about your situation in a negative way, repent of that. Seriously, repent of it. And, you know, the enemy has to give back sevenfold what he has stolen from us. You know, we don't want to walk around in doubt and fear. Doubt you do without, okay? We want the faith of God and to walk in uh, his righteousness, okay? You know, uh, let's see, Ephesians 6 talks about our armor. And if we have, one of the pieces of armor is our shield of faith. And I believe God is trying to get us to hold that shield up close to us, okay? And walk forward with that so that the enemy cannot penetrate our heart with uh, his fiery darts, okay? We need the faith of God. We need to rise up in that and be steadfast with him, okay? All right, till next time, be blessed.